Hey everybody, Jared of Second Life Design. Welcome back to Milling Monday. So, looking back to episode 14 of Milling Monday. Number 14, we started getting into the, my slab drying process. This is the one where I had all, I showed all my slabs stacked up against the house, how I hose them down, check out all the grain, look for defects, uh, let them sit there for five or six weeks to lose a lot of free moisture. Um, had a lot of questions about that and it kind of seems like an extra step. That's fine. Go back to that one. I talking about it a little bit more. Today's video is about the next step. So this has been six, seven weeks later. They're up against the house. What do I do with them then? So my first, uh, my first option with this, primary option that I like, stack them inside. That is going to be the quickest route to drying. Uh, that's going to get the things most usable the most quickly. I do it a little more unconventionally where you can kind of see some things behind me where I actually stack slabs vertically. I have what I, what I kind of refer to as my lumber library, where basically the outer perimeter of my shop, uh, I'm, I'm in a 24 by 30 garage, the outer perimeter is completely full of slabs stacked vertically. You can see them behind me, you see them on this side. Um, every wall except for the garage door has slabs on it. Um, it cuts down shop space kind of marginally compared to if I were to have these all stacked on the ground horizontally. They're a lot, they're a lot easier to sort through. Um, you can kind of see them here. And I'll get close-ups all this. You can see everything in a little bit more detail. But, uh, you know, I can flip through these. You know, if I'm looking for a project, I can just flip them a little bit. I can see what's there. It's easier to take measurements. I can see how tall things are. A little bit easier. I'm almost six foot, so I can see what's closer to that. It's just a, kind of a better system for me. Um, it would not work in everybody's situation. If you, I have kind of low ceilings. If anyone else has low ceilings, it's, it can be kind of a challenge to work around. Um, if you don't have exposed joists to tie onto, that can be a little bit of a thing. And I'll show you what I use to kind of, kind of uh, support things. But drying inside is preferable. I like to dry vertically. I dry my slabs standing up. I'm going to show you the, the two stacks of walnut that I had outside. I've got those stacked in vertically now. So I'm going to, I'll turn the camera around here, get set up again. I'll show you how I stack these and we can kind of talk about drying times and, you know, kind of other potentials for things and show you other, some other stuff about the lumber library. Okay. If these slabs look familiar, it's because in episode 14, they were stacked up against the house. I was hosing them off getting all the dust off of them and letting them dry out a little bit. I have since moved them in, uh, got them stacked up in here and put them back in the original orientation they were in. This is mainly so I can keep track of it for book matches and things. You know, if I want to keep these two or these two together, something like that, it's just a lot easier that way. It looks kind of neat, you know, in that regard, but you know, it's, it's more for an organization point for keeping track of book matches and that. Um, I, by and large, have had very good luck drying vertically. Um, I've tried it with different pieces, whether they're straight pieces like this, uh, big crotch pieces, different species. I've had very good luck with it. Um, I, I know the traditional way would be you know, stacked horizontally with stickers, and I, I, I do that as well, but I think if, I, if you have the space, this is my number one option. And for one main reason, I'm only handling it one time then. I'm taking it from the trailer, from my yard, wherever, putting it in here. It's staying here until it's ready to, ready to use. I, you know, being a one-man shop, every hour counts, every movement counts. If you can minimize those, uh, you know, that's the way to do it. So this is going to stay here for probably about 18 months, and then I'll take it out and make it out of something. I don't have to keep transporting it and moving it and whatever. So that's why I like this. Let me turn around a couple different areas and I will show you a few different things about stacking vertically. All right, if this stack of slabs looks familiar because this is the other log that was stacked up against the house and this is its home. Um, this kind of shows the two, the dividers I have that are going between these and they're just, it's kind of hanging out here. There's nothing, nothing to do. No stickers to have to shift or put in and they just kind of stay in place and this is where it's going to sit uh, much like the other one i'm going to pan up and down a little bit or tilt up and down kind of show the dividers a little bit more if this is something you're at all interested in i have another video uh, i think it's called lumber library part one and it shows how i made these dividers 
and how they are going all the way up to the roof trusses. So that is what they're looking at. You know, that's what you're seeing there. But uh, yeah, whenever possible, um, drying inside is preferable. It's going to be a little bit quicker. I've got a heated garage. It gets very hot in the summer. There's a lot of heat in here that you're already going to be using anyway. So you might as well be drying some lumber. Okay, so here is one last section I have. And this, I call this walnut wall. Um, this whole thing is all big slabs of walnut. And they're all longer. So let me tilt up a little bit. They're actually going under the roof truss on the end wall. And that's why there, there's a lot of material here. And if you were to go look at this just straight from a board feet perspective, um, I, I think I counted there was like 800 board feet all in this one wall. And it's all not protruding out from the wall less than 22 inches. So there is, it's a good use of space. If you were to get 800 board feet somewhere else laying on the ground, it would be inaccessible. Uh, you know, you'd have to unstack the whole thing to get to one piece where this is a little bit different. I've got some single slabs up here and some other things there, but all this other stuff, this is the whole end wall of my shop. You know, it's uh, you know, 24 feet wide is all stacked up with slabs. So, you know, please consider stacking vertically. If you have the space, this is a fantastic option. All right, so first, I want to apologize for the kind of the bad images or shaky images. My shop's pretty cramped. I've got a lot of other stuff going on, but I've still managed to pack a lot of stuff in here, and it's also drying at the same time. So what I don't worry about being able to, you know, access all this stuff back here, you know, the lays in front of it, but I don't need to get to this stuff all the time. So I, you know, I'll need to use this before I need to use those. That's why, you know, you always have to move something to get to it, but you're not ac accessing it all the time, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I do have a lot of material in here. It's all stacked vertically. It's left a lot of square footage available on the floor. Every put, I do have some stacks of stuff on the floor, you know, going horizontally, but it is, those are the big uh, space hogs. They take up a lot of surface area. So I'm trying to get away from it. We do the best we can. So in the second part of this, or the next video, as soon as I can, I'm gonna talk about stacking outside horizontally. That is, you know, it, there's still some good stuff to be uh, thought of there. I'm doing a little bit more of an unconventional way where stacking up a lot of smaller pieces. You know, it's easy to get, you know, the big logs like this one where they go back into their own shape. But, you know, if you have the, the smaller pieces and you get a bunch of logs where you have, you know, you took four or five uh, 16, 18 inch logs to the sawmill and you got a whole trailer load back. How do you stack all those the most efficient, efficient way possible uh, for success? That's what I'm going to cover in the second video or part three, I guess would be. So um, yeah, appreciate all the feedback, all the new subscribers. Welcome. If you have any questions, drop them down below. You can always find me on Instagram at Second Light Design. Um, yeah, we're getting back to it and I have some good stuff coming. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, chainsaw milling in the coming weeks. I'm taking my whole Christmas break and milling up three giant logs. So some, some good stuff will be coming. Anything else? Let me know, guys. Thanks.